Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to answer a simple question. What are the easiest game engines? Now that's actually going to vary from person to person, but the reason why we are talking about this is because of BuildBox. Now if you've never heard of BuildBox, it is a 3D, super easy to use game engine. It kind of filled a unique niche there, but there are other options out there. The reason why we're looking for alternatives is because BuildBox just blew themselves up with some idiotic price changes. I'm not going to rehash all that. I'm just going to tell you we already covered it. I will link that in the linked article down below. So if you want to learn more about BuildBox going all weapons great stupid, you can. If you want to stay up to date on the latest in game development news, do hit that subscribe button. But after BuildBox went insane, it did kind of leave a hole in the market. What BuildBox was good for is they were a very approachable, easy to use 3D game engine. And that's what we we're going to run through today. Some of my suggestions for easy or entry level game engines. These are some of the easiest to use options you are going to find. Some are going to be 2D, some are going to be 3D, and some are going to be games that you can script in. And there are a ton of other options. I've covered many on the channel, but these are some of the ones that jump out to me. So if you are in the market for an easy game engine, stay tuned. Now the first one we're going to start with is Scratch. Now Scratch was invented by MIT, and this is like the OG teaching game engine. There's some really nice things about Scratch. It comes with a lot of content, and it kind of invented the whole uh, build these shapes together uh, to build your game logic. But the nice thing is it has all of these tools built in, nice interactivity, but as you can tell by it, it is also very much aimed at kids. Now, if you're looking to make something more advanced than simple 2D games, you're going to quickly want to move beyond scratch. But if you are trying to get someone started, especially a younger child started, but to be honest, even an adult can have fun playing with scratch. Scratch is probably as easy as it gets. The nice thing with scratch is they are um, open source and completely free. Next up, we have Construct. Now I'm going to mention Construct early because they just trolled the heck out of BuildBox. If you are a BuildBox user, uh, you can submit to Construct and get six months free. And Construct is uh, a visual on-screen based game engine. It's mostly 2D. They are starting to implement some 3D functionality, uh, but your programming is like um, almost like spreadsheets, if, if I'm going to describe it nicely. Now, there are some disadvantages to construct, at least to some people. Uh, they move to a browser-based approach for the tooling. I know that turns some people off. You can work entirely offline, uh, but if you're anti-browser software, construct is not going to be for you. And also, it is ultimately commercial software. That's not, you know neither here nor there, but it's one of those things to be aware of. Now, if that commercial price tag does turn you off, there's also GDevelop. GDevelop and construct are quite similar to each other. They're uh, very similar in, in what they do. They're both 2D game engines. I don't know if Construct has, uh, sorry, if GDevelop has moved into 3D. I think it's one of those things they've talked about, but I don't think that functionality is there. It uses a very similar um, spreadsheet flowchart kind of approach to developing games, uh, and it has all of the tooling you need in one place. I've done a couple of videos on GDevelop in the past if you want to learn a little bit more about it, but this is a free option, which is always kind of nice. Now, next up, we move on to Click T. Team Fusion. And this is, again, all three of those engines use kind of a similar approach to how things work, this kind of spreadsheet type grid. Now, one of the things about Click Team Fusion is it's been a long time since it was updated. There is a free, free version of Click Team Fusion, a commercial version of Click Team Fusion. You pay for supporting various different other platforms, basically. So if you want to run mobile or web, you got to pay. Uh, and I think the free version has some limitations in it, but you can check it out for free. The biggest claim to fame from this engine is it was what was used to create the uh, Five Nights at Freddy series and a few other actually pretty popular things. Now, they've been working on Click Team Fusion 3 forever, and that one is going to have... Um, uh, full-blown um, 3D support, I believe, but I don't know when that is ever going to come out. So uh, who knows at this point in time. Next up, we have uh, Microsoft's Arcade. Uh, make our what? No. Uh, sorry, Make Code Arcade. And I just did a tutorial on this one. I love this game engine. It is just, it's an interesting experience to work with. Now, this is entirely browser-based, one of those things to be aware of. It's an open source project, and it is completely free, and you can also use it to run on other hardwares. It's kind of taken the stencil of, oops, I forgot I had audio. 
All right, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, you, you build things together. This was all of the code required to create a survivor horror Pac-Man game. I've done a tutorial on that. If you do want to check out Make Code Arcade, you can also actually have it run on a variety of different devices that are out there. Some of these devices are designed that you kind of build them yourself. It is definitely an interesting project, and it's a heck of a lot of fun to play with. And then the cool thing here is you can also switch to code. So if you're working with Visual, it can have it as a code generator that works in JavaScript or even Python. This is one of my uh, greatest recommendations for beginners. And if you're just a programmer in general and want to go and have some fun with this, uh, definitely worth checking out. Next up, we have Stencil. Now, Stencil is free for desktop usage. Uh, this one is another nice engine in the fact that you can actually extend it using the Hacks programming language. Um, it, it uses a Lego brick kind of setup as well. Uh, I have done a hands-on with this one. Unfortunately, I believe Stencil is 100% 2D only, which is of course going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, next up, we get into Core. Now, Core is interesting in that this is kind of a game for building games that's a little bit closer to the engine side of things than something like, say, uh, uh, Oh, what was my brain going with? Uh, the one that just had a really big IPO, uh, Roblox or Minecraft. This is more of a game you you actually can use their predefined bricks and blocks and tools and, and all this other stuff to, to do your game design. Uh, but you can also go one step further, create things with Lua. Uh, and then there is a community of interconnected games that you can work with. This is actually built on top of Unreal Engine and is a project with a lot of momentum behind it. And now another approach on those same lines is Manu Video Make Game Maker. Now this is more aimed at like artists. Your workflow is more along the lines of traditional animation based approaches. You're limited in what you can do, but that also makes it quite easy easy to work with. So this one is probably would be most useful to say uh, an artist looking to uh, show off their, their capabilities because an artist is easily going to understand the trigger and event based driven coding method. Whereas a programmer is going to find what is currently there as incredibly limiting and there's no way to extend it. But Manu is definitely one to keep an eye on. I've covered it a couple times in the past as well. Uh, and then I have done codeless visual scripting game engine summary as well. We're going to see a lot of the things that we just looked at. You're going to notice a lot of the ones we just talked about actually have um, these options in place. And there's also a number of engines I didn't mention, uh, mostly on the commercial side, that are good and viable options out there. There's um, Copper Cube. Go ahead, check that one out. Uh, there's Game Guru, uh, App Game Kit Studio. Uh, so there are some other ones beyond what I've talked about here. Those are all slightly more difficult than what I deal, dealt with here so far. You're going to almost always have to get into a, a certain amount of programming experience to work with those, but all three of those are also pretty entry level. And I have covered every single one of them on the channel in the past if you want to learn more. But like I said, I did a resource back in 2019 of the codeless slash visual scripting engines that are out there. Things like Armory 3D, which actually works in uh, side of Blender using this visual approach. But truth of the matter is not really beginner friendly. And frankly, it's been somewhat abandoned. Now you'll notice BuildBox had a place on this list. It had a lot of potential in this space, but no. Uh, CryEngine has visual programming, but that is not beginner friendly. CopperCube has a visual programming, and I actually would recommend that, and I did a tutorial on that. It'll be linked here. So if you want to come in here, I will link this as well. So if you're looking for a codeless game engine, not necessarily easier, by the way, but uh, there are other options out there. And the nice thing about a codeless approach is a lot of times it's sort of self-documenting. So you can do more of a trial and error based approach. CopperCube, though, is a good suggestion, and CopperCube 6 is free now. So that's definitely a nice thing. Uh, the Godot game engine has a visual scripting language. It's not very good, if I'm honest. It doesn't really make your life any easier. It's basically a one-to-one -one mapping with their GD script that's built in. But in time, they are adding more features and functionality to it that hopefully it will be a better experience in time. Uh, we have Unity, we have Unreal Engine, and then again, uh, 2D, a lot of the ones we cover, Click Team Fusion, Construct 3, Stencil, Scratch, G-Develop. Um, Game Maker Studio has a visual programming or drag and drop, they call it, uh, programming language. 
Another option out there is Game Salad, uh, focused at students and non-programmers. Uh, there's Pixel Game Maker MV, which is pretty much terrible. On top of that, there's also like RPG Game Maker, RPG in a Box, and all these other kind of uh, game engines that are aimed at making a very specific style of game. And it really comes down to those ones. If you're interested in that genre, those engines could be a good pickup for you. So those are some of the, the visual programming languages out there. There are, of course, more. Uh, this isn't a comprehensive list by any means whatsoever. Uh, another thing that I had done in the past, this is way back in 2016. I should do an updated version of this, but this was more specifically aimed at getting a child involved in the world of game development. I will link this down below if you want to go through this resource as well. Uh, we actually cover a lot of the same game engines, but we're going to cover a couple of things here as well. Because a lot of it's going to come down to the age of the person you are working with, the attention span of the person you are working with. Because for example, if you're looking with a six, eight, maybe even 10 year old, they probably don't think in terms of scripting level language. They're probably better off with something a visual in approach. Uh, but there are some more entry level coding type things. So again, we got uh, gdevelop here as an option. Uh, there's the Lua programming language, which has some great options out there using Lua, such as uh, the Love Framework. Uh, there's the default game engine, which is completely free. Not really specifically beginner friendly, but it is pretty easy to work with. But this kind of runs down some of the terminology you may need to understand to, to make this decision, especially if you are coming at trying to get your kids started in game development, but you yourself don't really have an interest in game development. This guide should help you out. But again, here we got suggestions such as uh, Scratch, uh, we've got construct again, kind of, you're going to see a consistency here because they are good fits. Game maker is another option, although that one is commercial. Uh, they were purchased by, um, uh, Opera, the browser maker, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some pricing changes there. So hopefully that comes in time. Alua and love are a good combination. If you want a script, there's a framework for Python called Pygame. The cool thing there, and that's pure coding, by the way, uh, but it is a nice approachable method of making games if you want to start someone out. Pygame is pretty slow, uh, but there's a lot of books out there that will get you started coding. So if you're, if you or your kid or someone you know, they want to get into programming and they want to do it via games, this is an option out there. Um, and then, uh, you know, you got Stencil and a few others. Lego Mindstorm is another interesting option there. We've got Roblox and Minecraft and so on. So I've got this guide listed as well. It is a few, day, a few years old, uh, but quite frankly, it's as you saw from a number of the suggestions we had in this one, a lot of it is still up to date. So quick recap, you've got things like Scratch, Construct, GDevelop, Click Team Fusion, uh, Microsoft Make Code Arcade, Stencil, Core, Manu, and then a number of visual things out there. Now, another one that people are going to tell you is the possibility of using Unity and Bolt. And that's a good combination. Bolt is a nice programming language that's built on top of Unity, gives you a visual approach. Um, it has now been purchased by Unity, is included out of the box, and is gonna kind of become a premier feature. With that, in time, Unity will become a much better beast for introductory level uh, game development, and there's a huge community behind Unity. I just gotta warn you, there is a lot of features and functionality in Unity. It is ultimately a professional tool, so there's gonna be, a, you're gonna have to stay focused. There's a lot there that could distract you, but there are, there, you could perfectly validly start with something like Unity and using Bolt as your visual programming language and unreal engines blueprints in all honesty unreal engine blueprints are the single best visual programming language i have ever experienced as an actual programmer so it feels the most like programming to me i don't mind working in it at all but it is also hugely complex so i actually don't really recommend it to an absolute beginner but it is another option out there there are a decent number of books and resources if you want to learn with unity or unreal engine those are two viable options as well uh, but the other ones I listed are definitely beginner tier level. And again, a couple of honorable mentions go out to things like Copper Cube, App Game Kit, Game Guru. Uh, a lot of these are available on Steam. They're often discounted. And again, Copper Cube 6 is now actually free. And I did a tutorial on it. If you want to check that out, everything you need to know is probably in that tutorial. So it would give you an idea if this engine does what you want. Now, a lot of these are not going to have all of the features and functionality in like a triple A style game development environment, but you want that. You are a beginner. Whenever they take away all these options from you, they also generally streamline the decisions you need to make. So that's a good trade off most of the time, but that is a number of things to get you started. Are you, do you have another suggestion on top of that? And by the way, if you are looking for like just game engines in general, I've covered well over a hundred of them in a playlist. I will link that down below as well. So that is it. Let me know what you think. Easiest game engine. Give me your comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.